Philip and I are sitting on our thinking rock overlooking the brook. Our feet are dangling inches from the top of the water. The sun is out. It's a hoodie weather and it is so absolutely gorgeous out. Philip and I have been doing so much work this week. A whole bunch of little clips we're going to show you in today's video. One of the things we did this week was spent so much time with our boys while they had all of their extracurriculars. We had badminton regionals and science for regionals and we were had two kids in two different cities at the same times and it was a little bit of an absolute like you know we really felt like we had teenagers this week because oh, yeah, we just we shuttled did. around we were just snack caterers <laughs> and car driver or truck drivers this week <laughs> and so but we got everyone where they needed to be and it was overall a super good week and we're just taking a few minutes to have a breather right now and we've been doing something exciting this week so as you know we had our little hallway fiasco where we painted like 16 shades of blue and, and ended up it ended up being white in the end and I know you see that we use a lot of white paint there's kind of been a reason for that I think it's taken us some time to kind of like get our grounds in this house and know what kind of color palette we wanted to go with yeah. and just live here a little and just kind of get our bearings and what we wanted to do for our style for the house so Philip and I this week have picked a house color an interior color for every single room in the house. I know, it's tough to believe. <laughs> it's but tough it, to believe. We've been sitting here, I think in the most perfect spot to choose the color palette for our house. And I think the house is choosing for us. It's choosing for us. So we actually have a little paint swatch on each room of the house. And the only rooms that are staying white is the hallway that was 16 shades of blue. And the hallway upstairs is gonna get a fresh coat of paint, which will be white because we have never painted the hallway upstairs. Boys have bedroom colors picked up. Oh, yeah. We're painting our kitchen cabinets a color. Oh my gosh. And we have paint half painted in the living room right now. We're moving the boys' movie room to a different spot in the house and our bedroom to a different location in the house. This week has been all over the map, literally, but we're yeah. so excited about- Our something. house looks like a Picasso painting right now. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Well, we're working on a whole bunch of projects right now, and we're also been working on exterior stuff, which we're going to show you. But it's been a really busy week, and we have missed you. But we're back. We had such a nice week and had our family time this week that we needed to do for the boys. And we are missing every one of you, and so it's so nice to be able to upload our video today. It's been a year-long wait, but look what we have in the back of the truck right now. It was so exciting. We just got back from the farm picking up our beehives. In just a couple of weeks, we'll be welcoming our bees. And so we have been enjoying the evening here, taking apart all of the hives and we're painting them. Philip picked this amazing color. It's kind of hard to tell what color it is in the lighting in the dining room here, but we have spread out everything and we're going to get these all painted up. We're gonna show you, we're gonna work on our plot tomorrow, but since it's pouring rain today, we're just working inside. But this is stage two of getting bees. Stage one was registering and getting our beekeeping number. Stage two is picking up our hives. Stage three is getting our plot ready. And then stage four will we be going some. to get the bees. <laughs> we have been busy working on shelving in the greenhouse. I just absolutely love it. And I picked up a thrifted table and some chairs a couple weeks ago, which did actually have another intended purpose for them. But we'd like to have some type of like an island or something in the middle of here of a work table. And I got this for like next to nothing. So we're going to actually cut it and make a greenhouse garden island. <laughs> Great. Gives us a little more side room. All right. I'm gonna be painting this table, so I'll be able to give it a light sand on the sides. And once we cut it, I think we'll put the island, the little leaf that's in the middle into it cut and cut that, that yeah. once we get the sides cut. Our goal this year was to have our shelving built and our seeds planted by April 15th. And I think it's the 13th today. So we are right on schedule. Okay, that's yeah, perfect. that's sweet. We also want to be able to come out here and have breakfast. And so we're going to put a couple of chairs at this. We're going to also build some boxes that we can make some soil blocks to be able to put into our wooden boxes to grow in here. It's really coming along. And look at Philip made a wood chip floor for me using our super handy wood chipper. It's coming along. Look how great it looks. It's amazing. I still need to bring out all my garden stuff, which we don't really have much of because we haven't done any gardening really since we've been here, but it's coming along. And then of course we need to do a little bit of a clean on our glass, our faux dander. glass. There's, <laughs> we had the chickens in here, so it's got quite a bit of dander. No sunlight's going to go through until we clean it. That's the perfect size. So if we open it and put the leaf in and then we can cut it, it'll be and the it was, same on both sides. Wood, so it's like 
sand it, it's going to be really nice. And I think you got the lines perfect. It looks so good. <laughs> I kind of eyeballed it with the level, but... It just gives us a little bit of extra space to walk around and, you know, if we want to sit here or sit there, now we can and still work in here and so look, it we just used, makes it perfect. We use scrap wood. Everything's scrap. Some leather boards. And that nice board above Philip's head there is a live edge that we took down in the living room. And so we made use of that. And this has cost us absolutely nothing to be able to make our shelving in here. And you know what? We can always add another layer or something down here. But we thought to have pots and bins and whatever storage underneath. We really didn't want to have anything in the way underneath. So far, we're loving the way it's working out. Yeah, if we, I thought if we put that in, then we'll just be able to cut. I'll draw the level line from one side to the other, and then it'll be perfect. I love the scalping on the bottom part of the table here, and I know it doesn't really matter because it's in the greenhouse, but I just love it. People are going to come at me for cutting a really nice antique well, table for the greenhouse. <laughs> I cut it. You can cut it. Aww. Okay, you then can I'm... find me at Philip A. English on Instagram. Leave me a message. <laughs> As Dayton Give calls, me all, tell me all your sorrows. Our Dayton calls that a shameless plug. <laughs> oh, okay, so now I'm just going to draw a line from one end to the other, yeah. and then we'll be able to rip it with the I think so. Stop. I figured that was so much easier than trying to line everything up, and after all, it is literally in the greenhouse, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I just so happen to have the perfect color of green paint that I think I'm going to make this. Like a garden green. I think that will be fun. That'll help the plants grow. Will help the plants grow. It'll encourage some green to happen. And I think we'll just bring two chairs out here and have two chairs so that Philip and I come out and have tea in the morning, water the plants or something. We can sit at the table. That's going to be the perfect size. And we can back it towards the door more because we have so much room. This is technically interior paint, which is the wrong kind of paint. So if you're going to paint something for outside, use exterior paint. Just using some leftover paint from the bathroom. It's going to be underneath the coating here anyways. And what I think I'll do is I'll just get a piece of plexiglass or something that we can put on top and we can wipe off. But for now, it's a greenhouse. Like, honestly, who cares? So, ready? Yeah. This color darkens up so much when we are painting the bathroom. Well, it might look totally different out here. By the way, we've absolutely been loving the color in the bathroom. And at this point, I would literally paint every room that color because every time we walk in, it is so absolutely cheery. And it just really gives you the vibe we were looking for for that space. And we've never been good at committing to colors on the wall, as you know. For one reason, Philip's colorblind. So Philip sees colors differently than I see colors differently. Oh, yeah, that's so true. It's hard for me to pick colors for the house and for us to pick colors for the house when we don't see them the same. Right. So we always kind of just go with white. We've done white and we don't love it. We want something else. And so now that we went, I'm going to say we went bold with the bathroom because that's pretty bold for us to pick a full room color like that and commit to it. Right. And we're absolutely loving it. All four of us love it. And so I think one of our YouTube family members put it best. I'm trying to remember what their name was but one of our youtube family members said they always thought they were a blue person because they grew up and their mom or their family members decorated with blue and they always liked it so they thought they were a blue person until they started putting greens in their house and then they were like oh my goodness i am a green person and i think we had that same epiphany this last week and a half doing the bathroom i've always thought that we were blue people until we started painting and doing some things with green and i'm a totally a green person <laughs> I've been steered wrong my whole life. <laughs> so we're loving it. This, this is a really beautiful color. So if you want to use this color, the color we use in the bathroom, this is called oil cloth. And if you Google this image to see pictures of projects that are painted this color, the color looks nothing like the color you see online in person. The color is so different than you see, which is common for paint chips, but I saw this color online on something and wanted the color so i went and searched it out it's a benjamin moore color so i had my beauty tone paint switched into or my the benjamin moore color put into our local you know store paint and because it's a lot cheaper that way and was really surprised when i opened the can that it looked nothing like my inspiration picture that i had but as i got i bought it i'm going with it put it on the wall and fell in love with it and so don't be you know 
tricked by the color that it shows online. It's really not like that. It looks very true to the color you see on the bathroom wall in our bathroom. I just see you working in here, and I just can't wait to be working with some plants. Two years in a row, we missed our gardening season here. First year, Philip had his bad dirt bike accident. <laughs> Last year, I had emergency surgery. It was supposed to be in bed for eight weeks. It did pretty good not being in bed, but definitely wasn't going to be able to be out garden. doing the things we want to do outside. And so this property needs a garden. And if you remember from our old house, even just in a backyard, we had a really big garden. So our goal this year is to grow all of our produce for the entire year for four of us just in a small what i'm going to call like backyard size garden that we're going to do and we do plan eventually to do raised garden beds but this year with the barn build and the cost of everything we have for that i don't think we're going to splurge this year and do the raised garden beds we're probably just going to do our plot garden which is how we started our original gardens at our old house and then we kind of graduated to raised beds but this year we're going to keep things as inexpensive as possible grow as much food as we can with just our seeds and tilling the land and then next year if we want to add some raised beds then we can but with the barn build this year being so costly it's just not in our budget this year to go spend you know a thousand or two thousand dollars on wood to do as many raised beds as we want for this area because we want to do plenty not just a few She put a mind to late night hours up the hill, serving coffee to strangers, talking about revenue. She kept dreaming of a world big enough for everyone. Well, she knew it must rain before it grows. She kept dreaming all the day, but if I survive the wheel, even though she down and never showed in here and have this functioning like we've had this greenhouse sitting here for two years now right. almost two full years and it's just been empty and while we were building those coops we had the chickens and stuff in here but that's not what this was for so to have shelving in here and make it usable without shelving a greenhouse is kind of unusable right, right? unless you have everything in just large pots but for what we want to use the greenhouse for to start all of our starter veggies and stuff to have growing our own food and things like that. I think this is the best way is to have usable shelving in it. Oh, it's so warm in here. I was going to say I'm sweating. <laughs> Jeez, you just step a foot out and then you come in. It's different. I'm not complaining about the warmth. We need the warmth to start our plants. It feels like Florida. <laughs> so we're going to be not using plastic pots this year. And done a whole bunch of research on the best way for us to grow our starter veggies and there's kind of a new trend where people are doing soil blocking and maybe this is not a new thing but it's just a new to me thing so if you already do this and it's not a new thing be like Alicia it's not a new thing that's okay it's new to me and so I bought a soil blocker and so it's amazing how expensive it gets buying just the plastic pots even the throwaway ones when you're starting and wanting to do your starter veggies on your own. Honestly, I figured out last year when we did pick up a couple that it would have been cheaper for me just to buy the starter veggies already started to grow in the little pot than it would have been for me to just buy the pots. And so this year to not only make it more cost effective, but also more eco-friendly, we're not going to use the plastic pots. Dayton had a really good point that I thought I would share with you. Dayton said, if we're avoiding plastic in the kitchen and we're avoiding plastic in the house and we're trying to be as plastic free as possible, why on earth do we grow our starter veggies in plastic pots? Makes no sense <laughs> when you really think about it. And so he's right. So we're not going to grow our starter veggies in plastic pots. We're going to do some soil blocking and I'm going to build some wood trays that we'll be able to year, use year after year after year. That's the plan anyways. And we're going to give that a try and see. So I think that it'll be really fun to not buy any starter veggies this year and have started all of our own 
typically every year we buy some starter veggies and then do the rest from seed. But we have not grown a single thing from seed here in Nova Scotia. So it's going to be a challenge because the weather is definitely challenging. But we're going to see what we can do. Don't need someone to save me. Something's off the way you look and how you pause when you talk. I think you said enough. You said you love for me something brand new. You said this is something you would never do. Here we are in your car. Let me see who you are. Who you really are. I have a bunch of these pieces that came off of the table ends and I've decided to use them kind of raw just the way they are and cut them into one and a quarter depth strips of whatever length we've cut off and I'm making handles for the sides of the boxes and I think they look so cute. So each box is going to have a handle on both sides. Philip's doing a miraculous job painting. He's not adding too much paint. Don't worry you two family. He is not the king of paint dripping and then... <laughs> And then I'm going to add the handles on, which I think look really cute. And just like chippy farm boxes, which I think are adorable. So I have handles on both sides. So cute. And then they're going to line up all the way around. We've done 14 by 14 inch boxes. And just using the scrap wood that we have. And then we'll be able to fill them with soil. And then do the seed blocking with the soil. And then we'll be able to plant our seeds in there. So we have ones that will go all the way around. And then I'm going to make some narrower ones that can go on the top. And then we have plenty of room on either side in the greenhouse here. Where I can have just like stacks of ones. That if I want to prop them on like other tables. Maybe we have some in the middle if we're overrun. And we have a lot more. Or even outside in the sun. It will just depend on what we're doing. But I want to have a ton of spare ones. Like maybe like 15 or 20 spare ones to have. That we can add to because this isn't gonna you know all just along our little c-shape here isn't gonna cut it we're gonna have a lot more starter seeds So our first seed boxes are there and they're ready. We've just got two done, but what we've done is we've got a whole bunch to assemble tomorrow because it's supposed to pour rain all day. So we have a handle on the front and we have a handle on the back. So they'll be easy to pick up from front to back, move them around. We can even stack them because they're all the same size ish <laughs> roughly they're just made with scrap so they're not perfectly square but they're perfect for this greenhouse and we're excited i love that they're green with the white handles and they're gonna get all dinged up and chippy and dirty and that's okay we want them to be kind of farmhousey but i think it looks so cute now we need them all around Waited until the paint was <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. You I couldn't. couldn't. Needs good dusting, but <laughs> it needs a good dusting. Yeah, we're gonna have to come in, do a good dusting. It looks so good, and we gotta finish all our boxes. The next three days are supposed to be really rainy, and so we thought that we would get a chance to finish a few minor details in the bathroom and be able to stay and build in our boxes and then finish painting our beehives. It's just so nice on those rainy days to still feel like you're getting things done, whether it be for inside or outside. So getting kind of that prep work done for those rainy days makes such a big difference in us getting things done that we want to get accomplished over the week. And so it's just really nice to know that we can get out here this week, rain or shine, and come in here and plant our seeds at the end of tomorrow when we know that we have our boxes built. So we pre-cut, we're going to assemble, paint, and get some seeds in there in the next 24 hours because our goal like i said earlier in this video was that by april 15th we would have our seeds in the greenhouse 
ready to start growing and then we just wait for the warm weather being able to have this greenhouse means that we can start our garden about a month to six weeks ish earlier when we were in Ontario, our spring would start basically now, or we would have had seeds actually inside in the windows or on a growing shelf back at the beginning of February. But because our spring is so much later, we really can't get anything in the ground until I would say about June 10th. So it's so much later than what we're used to. And so we really get the gardener's itch so much earlier than I think most people in Nova Scotia, because when you grow up in Ontario and you're used to gardening so much earlier, by the time June comes, you would normally have things really growing pretty good in the garden by that point. So waiting is really difficult, but having the greenhouse means that we can get a head start, get our hands in the soil, get seeds started, utilize the greenhouse. It won't affect with the frost that we will still get in late May here and then get a head start on our garden and then be able to move things out to our plots that we're going to do outside. So it's very exciting. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Let me know what you think of the greenhouse. I'm so excited. Our beehives are here. We only have a couple more weeks until our bees actually get to get picked up. That is going to be such an adventure for us and we will see you on tomorrow's episode.